Hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Procore, your host for this episode, where I've got a few stories about some OEMs and some more vehicles that are coming to the electrified marketplace. Ooh, exciting times. So sit back, relax, and let me get right into it. Now, my first story is about Audi. Now, they've unveiled the first of their two MEB models, the Q4 e-tron and the Q4 Sportback e-tron. The ESUV and ESUV Coupe will mark, quote, the entry into electric world at Audi, with prices in Germany starting at about 42,000 euros. Now, the Q4 is based on the MEB platform and is also manufactured in Volkswagen's MEB plant in Zwickau, Germany. And Audi will offer the Q4 e-tron and Sportback in three variants. The entry-level model is called the Q435 e-tron. It relies on the MEB platform's 52 kilowatt hour battery pack. Audi uses the 125 kilowatt version of the rear motor for it, and range is about 341 kilometers, uh, 349 for the Sportback, according to WLTP ratings. The AC charging power is about 7.4 kilowatt, and the DC charging power is up to 100 kilowatts. Now, the second variant, the Q440 e-tron, uses the 82 kilowatt hour battery pack with an electric motor output of 150 kilowatts. Audi gives a range of about 520 kilometers, about 528 for the Sportback, but these are still provisional figures, of course. With the larger battery, the Q4 is equipped with an 11 kilowatt charger and up to 125 kilowatts of DC fast charging. The top model is to be the Q450 e-tron Quattro that combines the 82 kilowatt hour battery pack with, of course, you guessed it, all-wheel drive to electric motors with system output of about 220 kilowatts. Now, acceleration for this and some of the others is 0 to 100 in about six seconds or so. And Audi gives the professional, uh, the provisional, excuse me, range as just under 500 kilometers uh, in, in the normal and the sportback range, WLTP, of course. Now, all versions offer towing capabilities as well, with capacities of up to 1,200 kilograms, depending on the model. In Germany, body variants are scheduled to go on sale in June of this year and hopefully more markets later this year. So stay tuned for more. Now, sticking with Audi, uh, at, of course, what's going on this month is the 2021 Shanghai Auto Show, and they've also debuted the Audi e A6 e-tron concept. Bigger news is that it is built on the new Premium Platform Electric, or PPE, no, not that PPE for short, uh, an EV-only chassis architecture developed by Porsche and Audi. Now, it can rapid charge at very high rates, up to 270 kilowatts, and in ideal conditions, can charge from 5 to 80% in under 25 minutes. And that 10 minutes of charging will add over 300 kilometers or 186 miles of range. Fantastic. Now, no exact range numbers have been given for this model. However, Audi claims that this concept can travel for up to 700 kilometers on one charge, most likely based on WLTP test cycle. And within the press release that they put out, there is mention that the pack is about 100 kilowatt hours in size. Power for this all-wheel drive concept is rated at 470 horsepower, while peak torque comes in at 800 newton meters, 590 pound-feet of torque, of course, and 0 to 100, 62 miles an hour or so, uh, kilometers in under four seconds so pretty quick for a big car now no pricing has been given but you could be sure it won't be cheap stay tuned for more details on this concept hopefully becomes more of a reality now switching brands to genesis genesis has revealed its first all-electric model the g80 sedan an all-wheel drive bev version or all-electric of course uh, of the gas burning model that's in existence today. The electrified G80 has an all wheel drive dual motor setup that produces a combined 365 horsepower and 516 pound feet or 700 newton meters of torque, enough for zero to 60 in under five seconds. Genesis states that it will support DC fast charging of up to 350 kilowatts, which would provide a 10 to 80% charge in just about 20 minutes. That's great. 
Now, no battery pack sizes again have been provided just yet, but any DC range of 500 kilometers, 300 miles or so was mentioned, which will obviously drop when tested on the newer WLTP cycle and then drop even further when tested by EPA. It still should be decent. Now, the Genesis G80 All Electric is destined for China and European markets for now, with more information coming later this year. All right, now let's talk about Mercedes. They have just presented their second compact the electric SUV, the EQB. You know, there's EQA, now EQB. It uses Daimler's modular technology for compact models and will come in either a five or seven seater configuration. It'll support rear wheel drive and all wheel drive options with a combined motor outputs of up to 215 kilowatts. Battery size is estimated to about 66, 67 kilowatt hours. That will provide a range of up to 419 kilometers, 260 miles WLTP rated. EPA will be less. 11 kilowatt AC charging and standard DC charging of up to 100 kilowatts. Now the EQBs will be built in Hungary, which will supply the Europe, North America, and most other marketplaces, except for China, where it will be built there for in-country specific consumers. No other details or pricing has been announced yet, and production is estimated for some time in 2022, so keep your eyes on Mercedes. Well, let me talk about Toyota. Don't talk about them too much, but they finally revealed an all-new, all-electric SUV concept. Name the Toyota BZ4X or BZ4X concept. And this heralds the first out of seven upcoming production BZ, BZ models that will be launched globally by 2025 for Toyota. The total number of dedicated BEVs from what they're saying will be 15 by the middle of this decade. I'll believe it when I see it. This vehicle was jointly developed in partnership with Subaru, which without a doubt will introduce its own car based on this concept. And both are based on Toyota's new ETNGA platform, dedicated to battery electric vehicles. It should be an all-wheel drive vehicle. However, no additional specs have been provided yet. Toyota plans to produce the Toyota BZ4X in Japan and China markets and hopes to begin worldwide sales by the, uh, of this model by the middle of next year. And U.S. product uh, details will be shared at a later date. I'm very glad to see Toyota starting to climb the EV revolution ladder with serious offerings. Sticking with Toyota, they also announced that they intend to bring electrification to their pickup truck lineup in the near future, including hybrid and all-electric powertrains. Now, this is in addition to other models announced and planned, as I mentioned, as they move forward towards their goal of being carbon neutral excuse me, by 2050. There are no details about the electric pickups, but the timing is estimated that they will come to the market within a few years. That seems reasonable, as there are already many other auto manufacturers bringing pickup trucks to market, as you know, like Tesla with the Cybertruck, Rivian with the R1T, as well as the market leaders like Ford and GM who are currently working on their electric pickups. Toyota, of course, doesn't want to be left behind, so they're going to base this pickup truck on their ETNG platform, as I mentioned in the earlier model, to push electrification forward, and hopefully they will succeed. So just keep, again, keep your eyes on them. Now, the other big news this week was Cadillac's debut of the Lyric. There was obviously a lot of press around this and some Super Bowl ads and things like that. But uh, this week, they actually came out with full details and announcements uh, on the actual reality of that product. And, you know, it's a pioneering moment for Cadillac. It really illuminates the brand's future and resets the fundamental notions of luxury motoring. Now, the production debut of the 2023 Cadillac Lyric is the culmination of a century of innovation and beginning of a new era for Cadillac. Perhaps the most striking example of Cadillac's next iteration of brand styling is its distinctive black crystal grille, which makes sure it looks distinctly Cadillac. The signature vertical lighting is emphasized through lighting choreography. The exterior lighting is a major technological breakthrough allowing Cadillac to deliver on the promise of truly vertical lamps and industry first. At launch, Lyric will be available with premier technologies and stirring performance capabilities enabled by the vehicle's dedicated electric architecture. 
a 12 module, 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, and a rear wheel drive Altium platform deliver about 340 horsepower and 440 newton meters of torque, and an estimated range of over 300 miles, 510 or so kilometers, of EPA rated range, GM says. All wheel drive versions will also be available, offering increased power. Now, Lyric also offers high speed DC fast charging for public stations at 190 kilowatts. That's something different, enabling consumers to add an estimated 76 miles of range in about 10 minutes of charging time. And for home charging, Lyric offers a segment leading 19.2 kilowatt charging module, which can add up to 52 miles of range per hour of charge. That's pretty good. All kinds of technology will be included in the Lyric, such as Super Cruise, Next Generation Regen On Demand, One Pedal Driving, um, Slimline LED Headlamps, and a huge 33-inch Diagonal Advance LED Display. you got to love that dash, folks. Now, GM will build the Lyric at the Spring Hill, Tennessee plant in the United States, with production starting in first quarter of next year. By the way, GM is also building an EV battery plant in the same area, and that's supposed to be operational in late 2023. The Lyric will be sold and serviced by over 650 Cadillac dealers across North America in support of GM's commitment to an all-electric future. Pricing was announced as well, with the base MSRP at $59,990 US dollars and $69,898 Canadian. With testing of Cadillac's inaugural luxury SUV running ahead of schedule, the brand announced that their customers may place order reservations beginning in September of this year and initial availability, as I mentioned, starting in the first half of 2022. Now, one last mention. This is pretty important. At the press announcement that I was invited to earlier this week that I attended, GM confirmed that the company will, and I quote, not be selling ICE vehicles after 2030. Now, folks, this is a huge statement to make, and it really underpins GM's commitment to going all in on electric vehicles. Yes, folks, there are doubters out there, and I read about them all the time. These guys at GM are really serious about EVs. And I don't know about you, but I'm super stoked about the future of General Motors. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Uh, thank you very much for watching on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Always love to hear your feedback and comments. Please uh, do that. And again, if you are a Patreon supporter, you know who you are. I'm always humbled by my Patreon supporters. Put your names after each and every episode that I do, folks. I think I'm the only YouTuber in the world that does that. But, you know, kind of, let me know if I'm wrong. I really appreciate it. And, of course, public service announcement. Continue to go get your vaccines. Follow public health guidelines. I can tell you that all my family now, we finally got our first vaccines uh, in this household. So at least we're feeling a little bit better about that, even though we're under lockdown. So follow public health guidelines, get your vaccine, and we'll get out of this soon. And continue to watch the EV marketplace. All kinds of stuff happening. There are so many new EVs coming out and models and things coming. Man, it makes your head spin. But that is all good because we need electrification in order to lower transportation greenhouse gases. It's a big deal. And let's continue to push that way. So until the next show, please, everybody stay safe. And I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.